It's September 2nd, 2021. I'm Todd Dunn and today I'm aboard my 1936 wooden boat Tortuga. And what I'm going to be doing is installing a Victron Orion 12 volt to 12 volt uh, 18 amp DC to DC charger to allow my boat's engine alternator uh, to charge the lithium iron phosphate battery I installed about a week ago, which has been charging only from solar. So that's the plan. Let's take a look at the gadget. This is the uh, Victron Energy Orion TR Smart 1212 18 isolated DC to DC charger. Uh, what the isolated means is that the negatives of the two batteries that are going to be connected by this are not interconnected. And right now I have a jumper from negative on my lead acid battery to negative on my lithium iron phosphate battery so I will have to remove that but that's only uh, two uh, bolts that have to be undone and lift the cable out so that's pretty simple. So what this does is it allows you to interconnect two batteries of different types that have different charging profiles and use the charging profile in this little gadget to charge the second battery. And in my case, I'm going to interconnect this between my lead acid starting battery, which gets charged by the alternator, and my lithium iron phosphate house battery. And so this has a lithium iron phosphate battery profile built into it, which I just have to select and because this is a smart charger from Victron, that means it has Bluetooth, so I can program it with my phone, which is a good thing, makes it very easy to program. And you can uh, custom, customize everything and really set it up well. And this also has some settings on it so that it will only charge when the engine is running and the battery that's connected to the alternator is above a certain voltage so I'll be setting that voltage today and uh, so that it will not charge from the start battery to the lithium iron phosphate battery when the engine is not running in other words so it won't draw the start battery down and leave me with a flat start battery so the main reason for this is because Lithium iron phosphate batteries have very, very low internal resistance. And by isolating the lithium iron phosphate battery from the alternator with this uh, charger, I can limit the charging rate of the lithium iron phosphate battery to a rate that will not stress the alternator. And in fact, this one, this particular charger, has an 18 amp charging limit. Uh, for a short period, it can go up to 25 amps, but for normal longer term charging, it will limit itself to 18 amps. And my 110 amp alternator can handle that easily, even at idle engine speeds. So uh, this will protect my alternator and also provide the correct charging profile for my lithium iron phosphate battery. So that's uh, what I'm going to do today is install this. Now I don't want to put it in the engine compartment because if this gets hot it will derate its output and my engine compartment gets pretty warm when the engine's running, particularly if the engine's been running for a couple of hours. So uh, basically I don't want the uh, system here to get hot so I'm going to mount it someplace else. In fact I'm going to mount it in the pedestal for where my steering is and it'll go in there and I'm going to have to pull the wires through the bottom of the pedestal and down into the engine compartment and that is going to be the hardest part of this install uh, because it's a little tight in there to get the wires through but I'm sure I can do it particularly if I can use number eight wires. So. I think I'm going to start doing some measurements because I haven't bought the wire yet. So I'm going to measure this up and then go buy the wire to 
connect this to the batteries. Okay, I have uh, prepped the uh, area for mounting this and I've pulled the cables in and we've now connected it to the input battery which is the my lead acid start battery and I am at this point ready to start the Bluetooth connection on my phone right here. So we'll do that. We'll go to Victron Connect and it should detect this uh, instrument. Yeah, there it is, Orion Smart. So, there we go. It's connecting. And I'll have to enter the pairing number. And third try is a charm, and it's going to update software now. So, that may take a few minutes. So, we'll just have to wait for that to be done. And it's going fairly quickly. Now this is the first time I've uh, turned this on, so I really don't know what to expect. The manual does not give any details about what the software looks like. Okay, firmware updated. Continue. And now we'll start that again. Okay. And it's reading 12.9 volts. I'm not going to change that yet. That was a request to change the uh, uh, Bluetooth connection code. And I'm just leaving the default, which for these instruments is six zeros. So what the next step is, is to go into settings, which is up here. And we want charger enabled. We want to change it to charger and battery settings and factory default is lithium iron phosphate so i'm going to leave it there it's got a 14.2 absorption voltage a 13.5 float voltage so that's pretty much it for battery settings and let's go down enable shutdown detection now this is a spot where i'm going to have to fool with it a little bit Start voltage is the voltage uh, at which it's going to start when it sees that voltage on the start battery. Uh, but because of the cable length, the voltage it's actually going to see is slightly, will be slightly lower than what the start battery is at. So my alternator normally pushes the battery up to 14.4 volts when it's charging. So I think everything there is pretty good. Shut down voltage 13.5. Uh, that's the lead acid battery, so it will not sit there for very long. And I think I'm okay there. We'll see how it works. And uh, I think I'm going to leave everything else the way it is. So at this point, what I'm going to do is... Uh, so it's charge is disabled due to engine shutdown detected. Now what I have to do at this point is I need to put a jumper back in, which I took out to do this, which shut the entire system off. And then I'm going to connect the lithium ion phosphate battery to the system. So I'm going to drop out of this. And... Uh, and do make those connections. Okay, I've got the uh, Orion DC to DC charger connected, and at this point, uh, I'm going to test it by running the engine briefly, and we'll see if it starts charging. And then when we shut the engine down, we'll see if it stops charging. And now we'll start the engine up. So you can see on the Victron Connect app, it says that it's charging is disabled and we will now start the engine this takes a few seconds and it will beep here's our voltmeter see it's pulled way down and it's going to start coming up go 
and in a second the alternator will kick in. There it is. And the voltage is coming up and it's turned on. Okay, and it's in absorption mode, which is appropriate because the uh, battery was essentially full, almost fully charged. It was down a little bit from a run uh, the day before yesterday for about two and a half hours where all of my onboard systems were running off of the uh, uh, house battery, which was only being charged by solar, and I was pulling it down by more than I was getting from solar. I'm going to turn on a couple of fairly large draws, and we'll see if the output voltage changes. There we go. lights they draw quite a bit yeah no change at all how about the radio everything's working fine so I'm happy with that now I'm gonna shut the engine down and we'll see what happens see how long it takes to shut off charging engine is shut down and we'll just wait and here's the start battery voltage is dropped down to 13.3 and basically what's happening right now is the uh, charger is pulling the uh, surface voltage off of the start battery and I have it set to shut down at 13.6 but there is a delay built into it I'm not sure exactly how long it is or how to change it so we'll just let it go for a little bit and see what happens. And hopefully, in not too long, it will turn off. <laughs> because what we don't want is for this system to stay in charging mode and basically flat my start battery. So hopefully, see how long this delay is. It's been about 60 seconds so far. Oh, there it goes. All right, so it's around a minute and it has shut off charging. So the system is turned off and we're in business. So apparently it works. It charges my house battery when the engine is running and the alternator is on. I set it to uh, a lithium iron phosphate charging profile. So it should be consistent with my battery and that will allow me to run anything I want when I'm underway and arrive at my destination fully charged unless I draw more than 18 amps while I'm underway, which I don't think everything I have on the boat uh, can draw that much power. So we should always arrive at our destination with the battery fully charged and everything will be ready to go. Okay. I will probably do another short video about this system a little later after I learn a little bit more about the programming. Uh, right now it's just sort of trial and error and I'm going to play with it a little and hopefully figure out uh, all the ins and outs of the programming and then we can do a little bit more detailed setup. But so far I like it quite a bit. It does the job and uh, charges the battery appropriately. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And to see more content like this, as well as boating content, uh, Mount Desert Island content, Acadia National Park videos, why don't you consider subscribing to my channel?